Previously, on Realms of Nerds, The Return of Ornon. The evil that lives in here has some sort of a gathering below us. Jarus has been working on a solution that I believe we can use to make a surprise invasion. You see a massive city. This is the ancient drow stronghold of Bloodvarin. This might be where to put the teleport thing down. Sibo throws it to the ground and crushes it underneath his heel. A portal appears. Two incredibly large pieces of steel piece this portal, followed quickly by the massive frame of Michael in his full battle armor. So it's time for war. just walked through the gate into this massive cavern that houses the city of Bloodvarin and uh, have opened up the portal to bring through the armies that were positioned and waiting up above. So, to start with, you guys are on the northern edge of the city. This map that I've given you is oriented north, south, east, west, with north facing the top of the page. We'll just use those for relative references. In actuality, you guys really have no idea what the actual points of the compass are because you have been underground for a long time, but just to avoid confusion. So you are at the, will be the top middle part of the map. <coughs> Bloodvarn is in a cavern. Do we know it's called Bloodvarn? Te- technically, no. Okay. But, it's on the top of the paper, so I'll, I'm just giving it to you. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine then. How about, uh... <laughs> fuck, it's been a long time. This is a dice-rolling game. <laughs> Mikhail, do a history check for me. That's 17. Mikhail, you recognize this city as Bloodvarin based on images that you have seen in ancient texts that you studied during your time... And so with that temple. being said, would I know something of the history of the layout of the city? You will, and we're getting to that. Okay. It just so happens that Mikael was particularly interested in this area of early drow history and remembers the layout of the city in a rough sense and is able to sketch you guys a not completely detailed, but at least somewhat uh, accurate map to give you an idea to plan your attack. I have seen this city in tales of scrolls that I have read as a young elf. I seem to remember the temple is here, the castle on the far side. Yes. Alright, Mikael, you also remember that the ancient drows that inhabited Bloodvarin were incredibly devout in their religion, although the tales of which god exactly they worshipped are contradictory. So it was a it was a cult? Uh, potentially. You know that they're not followers of Bahamut. I'll, okay. I'll tell you that. But who exactly they followed, you are not 100% sure. You do know, however, that they are incredibly religiously oriented and that their society runs very much as an oligarchy, and so even though there is a ruling class, the priests really have most of the power. So, and this has really taken a, a bit of a, an extended tilt, but would you compare them to, like, the moguls over in the Middle East? Sure. I think that, that I mean, that could probably work. <coughs> um, I was thinking more along the lines of, like, medieval Europe. 
Okay. Yeah, it's sure. it's like a really extreme leaning version of that kind of like medieval sort of power structure. But it's like But is it still kind of cavernous cuz they're inside a cave? Yeah, you're you're jumping around on here, but sorry. We're talking about philosophy. Yeah. We'll we'll get back to that. Yeah, so it's like if the Middle Ages had been even farther tipped towards the religious leaders having power. So it, it just like a really Okay. religious oriented sort of a society. So as far as the physical layout, this is inside of a a pretty big cavern, nowhere near as big as uh the cavern that made up the plains of doom. However, uh still very sizable. The top of the castle is well within the walls of the cavern. Um it's obviously dark in there, so you can't exactly see where the roof of the cavern is. But just based on general size and layout, you figure that there's probably a couple hundred feet of space between the top of the highest buildings and the top of the cavern. And the highest buildings in here are looking like they're probably... There's a, a big building in the center of the city, which you are fairly certain is the temple, and then farther back is the castle, and both of these buildings are probably about nine or ten stories. All right, so um, the troops have begun to march through the portal. You are all standing there as they start to march out. Uh, Michael has walked over to you, flanked by uh, two of his other warriors, and they are now standing beside you uh, as this army starts to array itself on the northern edge of the city. Hi, it's nice to meet you. My name's Ramash. I'm, I'm not sure if we met or not, but I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there, just in case. What did you do to him? <laughs> oh! Um, um, impromptu brain <laughs> surgery. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. We got attacked by a, um... <laughs> a, a mind flare. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, um... He kind of got his brain sucked out. You, 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 your science doesn't know how to fix that, does it? To be honest, we're lucky that he's still walking. I I know little of uh, matters of the mind. I deal in the art of war. Oh, right on, right on. Well, Michael, um, we uh, we we found the city for you, and here it is. Yeah, now let's fucking uh, destroy these goblins so we can get out of this fucking bubble place. You lead the way there, bud. Well, well, I think we I'm should not take... a volunteer in the hey, yeah, lead. I think, we, I think we need to take, you know, an approach that is responsible, and I think uh, we we need to just sit down and we need to plan. Let's do this, Leroy Jenkins. Or Cut we could that. send the gnome in unattended <laughs> and we could slip into the city fairly easily. Send the gnome in. Yeah, he well, is quite stealthy, after all. I, I'm down for that. I mean. So, like, what exactly do we have to... We're just trying to kill... Yeah, I mean, we send the gnome and he dies is no big deal. We just yeah, gotta we kill the horny boy, right? The guy with the horns and the... Josh, the the fire and eyes and all that. As you've been standing here talking, you start to notice that on the wall of the city there is some commotion. You see some torches being lit and uh, it looks like you can see the shape of people kind of running around. Well... I don't think we've taken them by surprise, so oh, we should probably get our plan in motion. I mean, I think we lost the element of surprise when the big portal went... <laughs> and a bunch of people came marching out. Is that what happened when you were born? Yeah. What? A loud... <laughs> and a bunch of people came out? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's how dwarves are born. <laughs> <laughs> They're not birthed. <laughs> they They're just created people, from a portal. People say that there are no dwarf women. And that, and that dwarves just pop out of the ground. The truth is, dwarf women have beards just as long as men. Okay, okay. Bringing it back. Wow, I'd never heard that before anywhere in my life. Oh, God. I'd like to do a perception check, please. <laughs> All right. <laughs> how bad we're doing at playing d d What are you perceiving? <laughs> I'm trying to see from the shadows what shapes of people or things are coming towards us. Okay. And trying to get, like, a head count to see if they're within range. Alright. 18? Okay. You 
can see, uh, like I said, you see people running around on the wall. Humans? They are at least humanoid in shape. You guys are still quite a ways away. You, um, it's far enough away that you can't definitively make it out. They're humanoid in shape. And they've you got can- torches? Not everyone has torches, but you see plenty of torches running around. I think it's safe to assume that they could be drows, considering that this is supposed to be a drow city. But you cannot definitively ID anyone. With an 18, I'll also give you that by this northern entrance, there are a few buildings that are not within the walls of the city. And you can see um some sort of a, like an evacuation effort as people are, you know, banging on doors and rousing people and getting them running into the uh, into the walls of the city. Well, Mikhail, what do you see? You got better eyes than the rest of us. I see the guards. We don't seem to have drawn their direct attention yet. Well, what's, what's going on? What's all that commotion? Uh, we need to get closer yet. All right. But, well, it looks like some people are um getting into the city, maybe. What shall our plan of attack be, then? Well, if they're trying to get people in the city, maybe we should try and get to that gate before it closes. Wait a minute, I'm still confused here. Are we just here to kill the sorcerer, dude, or, or do we have to find a way to to bring down this bubble on the Plains of Doom? Like, what exactly are we doing here? Yeah, I thought we were trying to leave this fucking godforsaken you're, you're, place. You're overthinking it. What, uh, but I'm I, I, I don't know. If we're storming the city... I mean, if we gotta go to the, the the big temple in the middle, that's one thing. And then if we gotta kill some monarch in the in the fucking castle, that's a completely different thing. Listen, I understand you're still pretty new to remembering how things work, but if we lose sight of the bigger picture, we might actually uh, negate any way to be able to complete the bigger picture's task by doing the smaller task. Alternative. You see, he he's a big picture player. thinker. Alternative plan, we each split up into groups of two and enter through different gates. You've never played D&D before, have you? That's always a bad idea. <laughs> Is it? Uh, sounds like a fucking fantastic <laughs> idea to me. <laughs> sounds like fun. I mean, I'm down. I. That doesn't sound too bad. I'm more stealthy anyway. If you wish to define our forces, I can send some troops with each group. All right. Thus to arouse Who's- a smaller suspicion. And not to look like a large group entering okay, um, and mass. From where we're at, can we see how many gates there are, or do we only see the one here? Kinda... Like, the top two? Um, I think you can see the one gate for sure, and then the one on the uh, northeast. W- on the west side, and then the one on the northeast side. All I right. think you can at least see the buildings that are there, but not the gates themselves. All right. Quick question. Um, that chick that did the training with us? Yeah. What was her name? Sage. 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 Oh, yeah, Sage. Is she here? You have not seen I her yet. I lost my okay. fucking abilities. And I'm, still, she's I'm a, still relearning She's a ninja. Stuff, she's so. invisible. Yeah, she learned the art of disappearing. Of invisibility. Ninjutsu. Ninjutsu. All right. All right, so how are we going to divide our forces, guys? There's five of us. How do we want to tackle the gates? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. All right, so you're going by yourself me. to one gate. What? what? You you by yourself. Hold, hold on. You're going all stealthy. I you no. no. There's no there's no You argument. always gotta Fine, fine. Like if this. you're gonna complain, I'll go with the fucking dwarf. No no offense to you, Brunhilde. You you're just fine. You're you're just, the good dwarf. If we're going with this whole hey, like, um we should have I'm thinking that we should have a uh, a heavy with a light. So Who's the light? What's, no. What's your uh, reasoning behind that, Brunhilde? To oh, divide our forces equally? Hold, hold on, hold on. Oh, that was OOC, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. I'm thinking that we should divide and conquer. <laughs> divide and conquer. <laughs> I think that we should have some of our more heavily armored fellas with some of the people who are uh, less uh, martially inclined. Yeah, well, I'm thinking that if we get the sneaky boys and um, we enter the city from the east over there, it looks like a bit of a lower, you know, lower wealthy, impoverished area. It should be easier to sneak in there. Just blend with the crowds, you're saying? Yeah, and um, without taking offense to this suggestion, Brunhilda and Joshami could pose as a dwarf couple entering the city from the east. I could walk with Ramash, a dark elf bringing his prisoner home. And Sibo 
being stealthy as you are, could easily enter as a wandering entertainer. That falls within your skill set, no? Well, everything falls within my skill set. No, no, I would be too keen. Josh me swallows a little bit of vomit that had come up. I would rather kill myself than uh, pretend to be married to a rock hammer. Well, then, if you propose to be obvious, it might as well be suicide. Uh, Listen, think think about this through, boy. We're in an underground place. How often do you think they get visitors, and all of a sudden they get a bunch of visitors all in the same day? As you sit here arguing, (laughs) suddenly from somewhere in the center of the city, you hear a long, deep horn blast. We're already outed, boys. Which is we followed might've... up quickly by a screeching, roaring, just absolutely terrifying sound. And with a few heavy thumps, a dragon rises above the city and begins to circle. Well, shit. Well, now you just did done it. We we're completely fucked now. I uh, thought Michael, we stealth. Michael, did you bring any heavy artillery? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to do a perception check and see what kind of dragon we're dealing with. A bad one? <laughs> like, a big one? Because it's dark in here, I want okay, to see if I see what color it is. Go ahead. You shoot the It's in the under. It could very well be a shadow. True. I got a 24. Well, with a 24... And you... the only character who doesn't have dark vision. <laughs> yeah, somehow... <laughs> yeah, you focus really, really hard... He put on his uh, reading glasses. <laughs> his uh, his level scanner. <laughs> Actually, no, you know what happens... Um. As the dragon uh, begins to circle the city, uh, on the wall you notice that they've actually started to build some small, almost bonfire-looking things on the wall. And as the dragon flies past one of them, you recognize two things. First of all, this dragon is being ridden by somebody. And second of all, this is in fact, as near as you can tell... The same dragon that you faced on the Plains of Doom. However, it's like twice as big. Okay, guys, I I, I got... Okay, here's why I can tell. First of all, that dragon is fucking big. And it's the same color as this armor I'm wearing, so I'm assuming we face a dragon at some point. And two, there's someone riding it. Someone is riding the dragon. So, how do how do how, what? Who do you think? Who do you think that is? Because I'm still a well. Um. Oh, imagine if it was fu- by process nuts. of fucking elimination. I say it's the last guy that we saw riding a dragon. Which means uh, it's probably Mr. Maliocalus. You have to remember that. I, I, I can't remember very much, buddy. Well, I'm filling you in here. There's this, there's this real bad guy named Maliocalus. He really hates Mikael, and Mikael doesn't like him because he kills his parents. All right. All right. Like so we're, we're, we're trying to kill this guy. Let's do it. Game on, baby. Have any forces started to walk out into the fields in front of the city? Actually... There is a detachment of uh, about 15 or 20 soldiers uh, led by uh, someone in a red robe that has walked right to the edge of where the buildings is and is now just standing there. All right, so who wants to go to that gate and face red robe, motherfucker? Mikhail, are you down for some fun? Yeah, but it will do more than just rouse the alarm. It'll set the whole city upon us. Well, how about we serve as a distraction? Maybe. I think that we're already past that, Mikael. I think that we, we've we already roused the city All against right. us. Choose a gate, and let's go, baby. Real, real quick, please, please. Michael? Michael? Yes? Uh, could you, how, how many forces did you bring, exactly? Uh... We we brought everything. The the entire garrison has been emptied. Um, That's a large number. We've got... Uh, and he, he's kind of calculating it. We could lean super bag here. You know, <laughs> we already got a good foundation going. Yeah, I did. He he kind of calculating up uh, all total a few thousand in ground troops, um, a few divisions of archers, and um, 
We, uh, and actually, as, uh, as he's talking, the last few troops come through, and you see that, uh, they actually have a few that are, uh, mounted cavalry that are coming through. We also brought, uh, one battalion of cavalry, although, given the layout of the city, I don't know how they will be useful. Hey, what are they riding? Yeah, what are the seeds? Uh, okay, so, basic. does this, Mr. Sir, who kind of forgot everything, does this kind of bring about any of his druidic Nope. Training Bye. instincts or anything? Nope. Horses are pretty, that's all you Did know. Did you train with horses? I can turn into animals. Cool. That's what do I'm kind of getting at. Do you know that you can turn into animals? I don't know. Is it an instinct at this point? Well, I leave it to the DM. I'm just curious at this point. Because I can't turn into animals. How about this? You tell me, do you think that your shape-shifting abilities would have been something that you learned early enough on that it would be an innate thing, or is this, like, a newer skill that he's learned? I feel like, at this point in his life, it'd be instinctual, but he did have his brain ripped out. Okay. So I don't, All right. I don't well, then, uh, roll a d20 for me, bud. Okay. Also, I mean, it's only specific animals. Oh, wait, you're just talking to... So I mean, oh. this is the first animal that he's seen. Yes. That's, right. That's our six. A sex. He ain't remembered shit. He remembers what he ate for breakfast. It's it like, was delicious. Hey, I remember. That's a horse. horse. Okay. A horse is a horse. Why is he riding that? It's a horse. horse. That's got it. That's right. Calvary, I remember now. <laughs> okay. Um, You see this horse and something in your head triggers like this thought that maybe you have some kind of connection or that, like, you know that you can do something relating to this. It's not really formed well in your head, but you kind of have sort of embraced this idea of, you know, like, trying to experience new things. So you lean into this. However, you're not quite able to coalesce it into a full thought, and suddenly a sharp, stabbing pain shoots through your brain, and you're going to take... uh Nine points of psychic damage. Jesus! And you fall to the ground, clutching your head. Ow! Uh, hey, Ramon, uh, are you alright? He was probably thinking about uh, what it looked like to see me on a horse, and it's too majestic for him <clears throat> to comprehend. Oh, uh, too ugly. Uh, it's oh. horrifying. Uh, ow! So, Michael, you say a few thousand, plus archers and cavalry. Yes. Hmm. All right. Um, you got any sneaky boys? Yes. Uh, I'm, is Sage here? She is somewhere. Well, uh, she she commands her <laughs> own troops. I I I know she was planning to come through with us, but I have not seen her. Real quick, I'm going to cast uh, cure wounds on myself. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't something happen when I cast magic? Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> What is it with me and rolling today? What the actual fuck? Okay, I get six back. I'd like to do- Have you used Cure Wounds before? Um, you mean after getting my mind eaten? Yeah. I think I have. I don't think he actually has. I don't remember. It's, God, it's you been a while. You didn't mark the ones that you relearned, so you knew which I, ones No, no, I, I knew first level spells, which is what Cure Wounds is. Yo. And, but I don't know if I- I haven't- uh, marked off any spell slots expended, so I don't know if I've used it recently. I think we have had a long rest somewhere before this gate. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bet I used it at some point. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember the exact... I know what I haven't used, and that's my second level spells, for sure. Josh and me like to do a perception check to see if he can seek out okay. the sneaky boys. Well, before, before you do that, he's got to roll another d20. Oh. Uh, the spell works as normal. Okay. Well, I would like to propose that we mount a forward attack on the southern gate in front of us with a small contingent of troops moving around to the east to enter through the eastern gate and make their way towards the center of the city. And what's your plan for that there dragon there, bud? Okay, go ahead, real quick. Go ahead and roll for that check. 18. You you catch a glimpse of Sage, and she is uh, over by some of the soldiers. 
All right, later losers. I'm going with the sneaky boys. Josh is going to make his way over there. Okay. He so turns we- around. By the way, Deb's on East Gate. Uh, I'm going to the East Gate, Josh. Well, then come on. Hey, we're trying to plan here. Let the adults do the talking. Says the shortest guy here. Fuck off. <laughs> All right. But for for real, Mister Mister Military Leader Michael, this, these are your troops. Um, what are we doing? I think I should like to know more about those men just standing there watching us. Perhaps they're there to negotiate? Or it's a trap! Will you join me? I'll go with you. I'm not scared. scared. I will join. I mean, why not? Here we go. Alright, so... Michael strides forward, uh... The two warriors that were with him, walking behind him, and, uh... I guess you guys uh, fan out behind them. You know, a quick walk over to the the edge there, and Michael stops, say, about 20 feet away from this group and uh, stands looking... I'd like to be 100 feet away. Oh, you're just going to hang way back. Okay. Well, I'm also Baby putting Jack together my bow. Baby okay. So if I see something, yeah, it's going to fall apart, so I'm just going to be really bad. So uh, Michael stands... <laughs> Looking more or less relaxed, but you can tell that he is ready to go if things start popping off. He actually takes his two swords and kind of flips them around and stands with them, like, both stuck into the ground and, uh, you know, holding onto him in front of him. For a few seconds, there is just complete quiet, and then the red-robed figure raises their head and... You can't really see much of their face because they have this uh, heavy hood pulled far over their face. You just kind of can catch sort of a sharp nose and a little bit of their chin. And uh, you hear, Why have you come? This city is closed to you. For too long, the forces coming from these depths have assaulted us. We will have it no more. This city will surrender or die. You cannot hope to assault the city with the forces you have brought. Turn now, and we shall consider not destroying you all. Ramash would like to throw a flame at this guy's face. No, Ramash does not want to throw a flame. Ramash wants to throw a flame at this dillweed. Okay, Ramash, go ahead. Well, we're all gonna die. I believe we're on fucking Jenkins here. Oh, nat 20. That, That does hit. Go ahead and roll your damage on that. That's 24 fire damage. And then I need you to roll another uh, d20. That's an 18. Alright, so uh, you, um, with an 18, you actually can choose. Do you want to enhance the effects of this spell, or do you want to learn another spell? You know what? Just for fun's sake, I'm going to enhance the effects of this spell. Make him a withering cocoon! (laughs) So, this firebolt shoots out and surprises even you with its size and magnitude as it strikes directly into this guy for 48 points of damage. And he is just obliterated. Uh, However, as soon as you do so, the 20 soldiers that were arrayed behind him are now charging. Let's do this. Twenty-four hours is like three weeks. Wookies, <laughs> 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 uh, lasers, Death Star. <laughs> so slugs up your butt is bad. Is that what I was gleaned from this? Hi, we're the Culture Quest Podcast. We're on a quest to become more cultured people by discussing a movie, a music album, a book, or anything else really each episode. Check us out, culturequestpodcast.com. Howdy folks, RJ here with your return of Ornon episode 23 break. Hope all is well with you, and if things aren't so peachy keen now, I hope they get better for you soon. We have a few updates, shoutouts, and the usual stuff to get through for this break, so let's get down to it. Starting with the news and updates for the podcast, you can now find the Realms of Nerds podcast available for listening on the Deezer app. 
We've also set up a new link for sharing the podcast with new listeners. I'll take them to a page where they can choose between several popular podcast services to listen to the show. You can find that link to share in the episode description as well as linked on our Twitter and Instagram bios. Speaking of our social media, you can find us, as mentioned before, on Twitter and Instagram with the username at RealmsNerds, R-E-A-L-M-S-N-E-R-D-S, and you can also find us on Facebook. We also have a Discord community group for all of our homebrew entertainment projects, which you can find linked in the episode description as well. When you make a post about this show on social media platforms, be sure to include the hashtag RealmsNerds, all one word, no space or underscore. If you happen to be interested in listening to our episodes in the order in which the sessions were recorded, you can find a playlist for that over on Podchaser. The link for that is also in the episode description. Do you like country music? Learning about the artists, songs, and history of the genre? If so, be sure to check out my other podcast, Cedar Country, co-hosted by Ray, who you know from this podcast, for playing Brunhild Hartholm as well as her DMing our Winter 2018 holiday special. You can find the Cedar Country podcast on all or nearly all of the platforms that you can find this show on, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoy watching video game streams over on Twitch, be sure to check out the Twitch channels Mikey New and Random Sevens. Some good friends of mine who are great up-and-coming streamers. Mikey New can usually be found streaming games such as Rocket League and No Man's Sky, and Random Sevens can usually be found streaming games such as Minecraft and Halo, and both can also usually be found streaming Fortnite. Go check them out. The links to their Twitch channels and their social medias can be found in the episode description. And be sure to tell them that RJ from the Realms and Nerds podcast sent you. Thank you all so much for listening to the podcast. We really appreciate you. Thank you to our friend Kyle for composing the main theme for the show. You rock, dude. Don't forget to check out the other projects and people that I mentioned earlier, as well as the one that I'll be mentioning here shortly. Take care of yourselves, your loved ones, and your friends, and I'll talk to you again when Episode 4 of the Vasanoka Adventures campaign drops. Thanks again for listening, and enjoy the rest of the episode. Have you been looking for some new music to listen to? Well, look no further. A couple of friends of mine recently started an alternative indie acoustic band called The Inevitable. Their first album, entitled Force of Habit, is available for purchase or streaming over on Bandcamp, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and Amazon. Links to the album, as well as The Inevitable's social media accounts, can be found in the podcast episode description. Be sure to go check out Force of Habit, the debut album by alternative indie acoustic duo, the inevitable. We are inevitable, and I'll never let you go. And we'll dance together till like we knew we would, and we'll stay together just like we knew. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's the Fortress of Fandom podcast. I'm Garrett, your host, covering the fandom topics you love most. Superheroes, comics, movies, Star Wars, nerd news, anime, video games, and so much more. If you like any of these topics, come join our band of FOFers and let your fandom flag fly. New episodes almost every week. Find us pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts and search for us on social media at the FOF Pod. Oh. No, they're they're like on like okay, no, level ground. Fucking okay. negotiate with villains. I got a twelve on the strength check for drawing the bow, and then I'm firing at one of the soldiers. You're all welcome. Man. <laughs> I'll just he he was already preparing for this, so this is kind of like an OOC, even though it is technically combat, but it's well, we're going to do initiative in a second. Yeah, because this is how I wanted this to start. Well, that's an 11. Um, against Susie. That is not going to hit. These soldiers that are charging forward are very well trained, and they actually see this arrow coming and move with almost superhuman speed, and three of them form their shields together, and this arrow 
hits and just is deflected off. So, I guess everybody roll initiative real quick here. Does that include me? Where are you? Are you back with the other people? I, I was going over to where Sage and yeah, the not, other not boys you. were. Yeah, not you. with the sneaky not there. boys. I'm with the He's sneaky boys. Back, I'm a sneaky boy. Uh, Mikhail? 15. Ramash? 16. Brunhilda? 17. Please Sebo? 18. 18. No freaking way. Did you really? Yeah. Look at us. Did it really go 15, 16, 17, 17 18. 18? This is going to wow. be a good game. Okay. Good thing I didn't roll this shit, because I would have fucked it all up. <laughs> You'd have gotten like three. a three. I have the soldiers that are attacking broken up into five groups. The five groups are going to attack all together, just so I didn't have to do 20 different individual initiative yeah. in individual people and all that shit. Solid. So they wow. attack his units. So they probably have yeah. a collective HP. In that How RPG of you? Apparently kind of this is an RPG, so... Okay, all right. so... First up is going to be the second soldier that was with Mike Mosley. We're just going to call him Soldier 2. So he is going to come up to meet the yellow group. Which, how many? Four. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, five, five groups of four. My bad, five groups of four. Uh, so he's going to attack the yellow group. He is going to kill one of the soldiers in that group. Okay, so next up is uh, one of the uh, soldier groups. It's going to be group, let's say group blue. And they are going to attack Ramash. That's a, that's a nine against AC. Negatory mean gene. Okay. So next up is Sibo. Alright, Sibo is going to uh, take out his bow. Uh, does he have advantage on this attack? No. It's going to be a 19 to hit, or 19. Are you shooting at anybody in particular? Um, how about that group that uh, Soldier 2 walked up to? That's, that's the yellow group. Yep. So, yes, you will hit them with a 19. Okay. It's going to be 8 damage. Okay, yeah, you catch one of them with an arrow. Uh, next up is... Brunhilda. I guess I'll march towards uh, the group that Sibo was attacking so that we can uh, take those guys down first. Okay. Thirteen? That will not hit him. Oh. Well. Next up is going to be soldier number one. He is going <coughs> to go after the blue group that was attacking Ramash. So he does 13 points of damage to one of them. And uh, that dude is looking not great. Next up is Ramash. So blue group standing in front of Ramash, right? They're yes. Uh, trying to attack him. All right, he's going to um, use his uh, breath weapon. Well, first he's going to cash um, Shalele on his quarterstaff as a bonus action, and then as okay, roll d twenty. I got a fucking one. Ramash attempts to cast Shalele on his staff, and instead it shatters in his hands. <gasps> no! And his staff is gone. Fuck me! Your magic was too strong for the staff to contain, and it shattered. Oh, damn it! Now I'm pissed! A little salty there, bud? <sighs> Ramash is gonna use his fucking breath weapon on this group of soldiers in front of him. Five foot by thirty foot line. Okay. They have to make a uh, dex saving throw. On a success, they take half damage. On a fail, they take full damage. Okay. Nine. They're taking full damage. And they take a total of seven fire damage. Okay. Yeah, I was hoping for a little more oomph, but I rolled a 6 and a 1 on 2d6. So. so you were attacking the blue group, right? Yep. And they did. That was 7 damage? 7 damage. Okay. Is that breath, breath weapon is not a spell, correct? No, that's my natural ability. That's what I thought. You kill one of the soldiers in that group, and uh, the others take some hits there. 
Okay. Uh, next up is the yellow group. They are going to go after uh, Brookhilda. That is a 23. Oh, you got me. 22 AC is going to keep you safe? You think you're safe? Not here, you're not. I'm not looking forward to playing that dragon. So you take three points of damage. Um, plus another. Well, I got a. There's uh, three soldiers left in this group. Uh, that's a, another. Yeah, it's going to hit. It's 24. Uh, and that's another five points. You're up to eight total. And then that's only an 11, so that's not going to hit. So you take eight points of damage from that. Okay. So you get yourself in the world. Okay, uh, Mikhail is up. The first group I fired at, which group was that? They had not split off into groups at that point. They were all just together. Okay. Just, I'm trying to take so, a clear shot that's not going to hit one of my friends. So sure. Nice. Um, what are the colors? Uh, so it's yellow and blue have already been engaged, and then there's also pink, orange, and green. Who's the ones along the top of the wall? Uh, no one's on the wall. Yeah, you're not engaging the groups on the wall. I mean, you, I guess you could if you want Are to include archers? more soldiers in this. Are there archers? Up Not there? there is. Don't archers bring anyone the else into okay. this fight, man. <laughs> Just shoot the people yeah, on the ground. Just trying to tactically see if, like, you are okay. I, I will give you this. You are far enough away, or I should say, everyone is far enough away that you're outside of effective range of the archers. And so, because their soldiers are engaged with you, they're holding their fire. Because it would basically just be a rain of arrows. It's not really effective for them. Right, we're not oh, going red arrows. wedding here. <laughs> Our arrows will blow. I was thinking out more three hundred, honestly. Yeah, it's more of a three hundred thing. Yeah. But yeah, so all right. So I'm firing at uh, blue. Oh, fuck! Who's not going to draw the bow? No, it will not. All right. In that case. Not able to draw my bow, I still have enough time to draw my long bow and make a secondary attack. Twelve. Oh, uh, that's not gonna hit. You're still you're still in the back, correct? Yeah. I was about a hundred feet behind. Okay. Perfect. So next up is the pink group, and they are going to uh go after Sebo. My man's in the background suplex in the bolt just for fun. So uh <laughs> nine That'll not hit. Okay. 20. That'll hit. I'm just going to go through and roll everybody's attack first, and then we'll do damage next, so I'm not going back and forth. Uh, 11. Nope. And 15. Uh, nope. It's only one hit. And he hits you for six points of damage. What the fuck is this guy? I, I'd say you're doing pretty good, considering four of them swung at you. Mm, nimble little rogue. Next up is the green group. I think that they're going to try and engage Michael. They all miss on him. Next up is Michael, and I think he's just going to return the favor. Murder some people. All right, so he hits for 24 points of damage on one of those guys, and uh, is going to kill him. He just obliterated them with his sword. Yeah, he, he just cleaves them in half with his swords. Uh, next up, is the orange group. I think that they are also going to attack Brunhilda. I don't know whether you should take this as a compliment or an insult. That is a 13, so that won't add enough. Another 13. Uh, that's a 20. Mm-mm. And that's a 7. I'd only so. be upset if your AC was a 22. And you had armor that resembled video game female armor. So I had like just I had like a, a chain mail bikini. The chainmail bikini. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See, twenty-two. We are what back up to the top of the order. Believe it or not, it's been three seconds. <laughs> six seconds. Six seconds. I'm sorry, six seconds. This shit ton of uh, shit happens. So seconds. Soldier Two is up now. Uh, and he is and fighting, he's play. fighting yellow, so he's just gonna keep fighting with those guys. And that's a total of 11 points of damage, which is enough to kill one, another one of the soldiers in the, that group. He was already injured, so he is now dead. Next up is the blue group, the blue group? which is attacking yeah. Ramash. Oh, fuck, I forgot. 
So 16? Nope. No. Nope. nope. <coughs> 18? Yeah, I did it. 18. That is a 23. So two of those guys are hit. Seven from the first guy. Jesus. And four from the second for a total of 11 points of damage. Oh, my lord. Mosh is not looking the best. Sibo, you are up. There um, are two guys left in the yellow group that you were attacking previously. And they're, like, right up on me now, right? Yeah. Sibo's going to pull out his two daggers, and he's going to make an attack. Okay. First one's a nat 20. Second one is a fourteen. Okay. Uh, the first one hit. Oh, sorry, not fourteen. Sixteen. Okay. They do both hit. Okay. And soldier two is right next to me, so I get to add a D six. Okay. So the first one is double damage. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be five. That's uh, going to be twelve damage. Okay. Oh shoot! I didn't even add the to hit. So that's a plus five, so that comes out oh, to Jesus. seventeen. Oh, well then in that case you killed that guy, so there is only one dude left in yellow. Okay. Brunhilda, you are up. Let's take out that last guy in yellow team. Seventeen. That will hit. Oh shit, one damage. Oh, yeah, that uh holy crap. You uh you cleave this guy from shoulder to hip with your it. Warhammer. With your hammer, it just like <laughs> it. You actually you you put his shoulder where his hip should be. Ew. Girl, damn. And uh, he is dead. Are we talking same side shoulder? No, or op- opposite side. So he went through the spine. Yes. yes. All right. Put the left shoulder where the right hip should be. Ah, Wait, you put your right shoulder. shoulder right? Yeah. <laughs> he is ver- 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 dead. <laughs> ver- ver- up. So with that, uh, yellow team is dead. We are on uh, soldier number one who is attacking blue team, and he is going to continue to do so. And he rolled a seven, so that's not going to do it. Ramash, you were previously attacking blue team. Yes, I was. <sighs> Ramash is very upset that his quarter staff is gone. So um, he's going to... Uh, Chalk up another produce flame and throw it at the nearest guy. Alright. That's a 14 against AC. Okay, that does not hit, and then roll a d20. 17. The attack does not hit, however, uh, it is a very large fireball that you throw as the, uh, the fireball is doubled in size. Holy crap. If nothing else, I spooked him. Spoopy. There, it was spoopy. a very spooky thing. They are, they are intimidated. Uh, Mikhail, you were up. I'm going to try to draw a great bone deck. I want to see one fucking fly. 18 succeeds. It's a 21. Uh, yeah, who are you targeting? <laughs> uh, the blue group. Okay, yeah. Uh, 18. Yeah. You catch one of these soldiers. Actually, it catches... A, a weak point uh, near the center of his shield. It actually pierces through his shield into his chest, and he drops to the ground. Uh, the pink group is up, and they are currently attacking Sibo. Uh, Thirteen. That will not hit. That's twelve. Nope. That is a also thirteen. And that is a fourteen. Nope. These guys did not do well on their attack. <laughs> They attacked bad. Okay. Uh, green group is attacking Michael. Uh, that's a 17. That's a no. That is a 21. That's a no. And that is an 18. And that's also a no. So, uh, then we go to Michael, who is gonna come right back at it. And unfortunately, he only gets attacked, so he's not gonna do anything. Uh, orange group is up. They're attacking Brunhilda. That is 18, 10, 13, and that is 21. Nope. All right. Uh, Soldier 2 
is up, and he was attacking yellow. They are dead, so he is going to shift his focus over to the blue group, and he's going to attack one of them dudes. So he hits him for eight, which is just enough to do the job on this guy who's already weakened, and he drops to the ground. Next up is the blue group. And they've got one guy left. I think he's actually, he was attacking Ramash. I think he's going to turn his attentions to Soldier 2 now that uh, he just saw his dude get chopped down. That's a 15, which does not hit him. So, uh, Sibo, you're up. Um, uh, Sibo is going to... The blue team is attacking... Who's attacking Michael? Uh, the green team. The green team? Okay. He was gonna run over to the green team with his daggers. Uh, first one's gonna be 23. Yep. That one's not 20. So it's both in head. Holy crap. Oh. oh my gosh, this damage. <laughs> that is going to be 22 damage. With some fucking daggers. Oh Let's do this God. shit. Sibo ain't messing around. Yeah, Sibo, like, jumps on this dude and, like, spins around him. And as he does so, he sticks his daggers in the guy's neck and then spins. So he, like, basically cuts his neck all the way around. Decapitated. Jeez. Not, qu- decapitated. not quite decapitated, but uh, just like a <coughs> cut all the way around. And his head sort of flops <coughs> back and then he falls to the ground. I like it. So Holy it's, crap. So what you're telling me is it's still held on by the viscera? I mean, he's still got a spine. He didn't cut through the spine, but everything else is gone. Oh, that's beautiful. I love it. Ten of the ten. Best kill. <laughs> feel, it sounds like a Mortal Kombat fatality. Mortal <laughs> Kombat! Brunhilde is up. Alright, so... But Orange Team's attacking me, aren't they? Yellow was attacking you. They are now dead. Um, did you say that Orange Team was attacking you, too? Yes, they're also attacking you. Alright, well, I'm gonna bring the hammer down on uh, Orange Team. What? You put the hammer down? 18. That'll do it. 14 damage. You hit one of the guys, and uh, he is shaken to his core, but somehow remains standing. Uh, Soldier 1 is up. And he is attacking Blue. He's going to continue with that and try to get this last dude here. He rolls a 12, which is not going to do it. Ramash, you're up. All right. I will try to kill this final dude on Blue with another. He's playing. He's feeling kind of confident in his casting abilities. You can see the flames are blowing the shit out of everything. So that is a 23 against AC. That will hit. All right. I'm assuming I can roll. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage first. That's seven fire damage. Okay, and then roll your d20. Seventeen. Okay, so that actually turns into fourteen fire damage that engulfs this soldier, and he drops the ground in a flaming heap. Yeah, now we're talking. And so now, uh, blue has also been defeated. So what's left? Green, green and orange. You have. Yeah, uh, pink, uh, orange, and green. You'd think at this point during the fight, Josh and his all-knowingness would try to take some troops around to another gate. <laughs> nope, he's looking for some stealthy ass. Oh, Josh and doing something. Alright, alright. Drugs, 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 <laughs> drugs. <laughs> Probably also that, but... Uh, Mikhail, you're up. Okay. Drawing, uh, arrow and aiming for the orange group, trying not to hit Brunhilde. 16 draws the bow. That's a 21 against AC. That does it. 19 damage. Okay. Go ahead and do, um, just do like a straight, uh, intelligence check for me. 19. Okay. Yeah. I think, uh, Mikhail is smart enough to recognize that his weapon will be much more effective against a fresh troop as opposed to the one that got smashed by Brunhilda. So you uh, tar- yeah. you target one of the other troops and take them down. Um, so the pink group is up, and um, 
They were attacking Sibo. However, they are going to stop and break off and turn their attentions to Ramash, seeing that he's eliminated the group that was in front of him. Bring it on. Fifteen. Nope. That's a nat twenty. Son of a bitch. Uh, that is a twenty-two. Yeah. And that is a critical fail. Ha! So only two of them are gonna hit here. So you gotta write an opportunity attack on that guy. Assuming I survived their first attack, maybe. So first guy hits you for nine. Oh, I guess that's not so bad. The other guy is another four, so for a total of thirteen. All right. Um. Okay, Ramash is really not. Looking and you good. will have a chance at an opportunity attack at the guy that. Went. All right. I'm gonna swing my scimitar at this dillweed. Oh, come on, that's a nine. That's not gonna do it. Ramash fucking whiffs after getting hit like he did. So next up is the green group. Sibo, you ran over to them as well, yeah, correct? So Michael and I are doing. Yeah. So, uh, they're actually gonna turn their attentions to you, since you just ran up, and they're gonna try and make an attack on you. Uh, 21? Yep. And 10? Nope. So you take 6 points of damage from this enemy's spear as he, uh, catches you with that. Next up is, uh, Michael. He is gonna continue to attack the green group here. He is gonna hit for 22 points of damage and uh, just obliterate one of these guys here. Nice. Alright, uh, next up is the orange group who is attacking Brunhilde. Practice the gerblins. <laughs> <laughs> that's an 8, that's not going to do it. 15. And another 15, so none of those are going to do it. Uh, let's see, next up is Soldier 2. Who was attacking the yellow group, but since they have all been dispatched, uh, I think he's gonna come over to attack Pink. He's for nine points of damage on one of the soldiers. Uh, Sibo, right. you're 12 up. 12 HP out of 45. All right. How many guys are left in this doing so well. green group? Just one. Alright. Wipe him out, you crazy Yeah. Sibo's gonna put this guy down with his daggers. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, first one's gonna be 15. Yep. Second one's going to be 12. Nope. Five damage. So, uh, yeah, you catch this guy a good, a good cut. Uh, Brunhilda, <coughs> you were up. Alright, well, we're gonna take on the orange crew because they keep trying to take swings at me. That is a 19. That does it. Sweet. Are you targeting the guy you previously hit or a different guy? Different guy. Okay. It's not worth my time. Oh. Yeah, he's yeah. injured. Let him die on the battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Twelve? Uh, yeah, he is not looking good at all. Next up is soldier number one, who <clears throat> is going to turn his attentions, and uh, he's going to go after that guy in green. And he rolls a six, so he's not going to do anything here. Ramash, you're up. Alright, how many people are left in this group on fighting the pink group? Uh, pink still has all four. Fuck me. Who else near me? Soldier 2, I think it was? You have Soldier 2, uh, is the only one engaging the same group as you. Alright, um, fuck it, I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds on myself again. I'm just gonna cast B. Okay, go ahead and roll D d20. That's a 19. So you get your 9 HP, and then you uh, learn a higher level spell. Oh, thank you, God. Just so you know what I'm learning, I'm learning Moonbeam. Okay. Yeah, you did really good at doing magic, so you remembered another magic. Uh, Mikael. All right. Take a guess. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I am drop out your rapier. Draw my bow. Aim for pink this time. Okay. Hoping on some decent penetration in pink here. <laughs> we're gonna edit that out. Are we? Are we? No, we're not. <laughs> and I don't draw the bow. 
But I use my extra attack skill to try again. And that fails, of course. <laughs> okay. So I pull up. <laughs> he pulls it, he tries to pull again, he tries to fuck it. Let's just do a workout. Hold right the disc. Now. What happened to your games, bro? Oh. Oh. What happened to your games? Okay. Uh, next up is Pink, who is attacking Ramash. Fifteen. Nope. That's a critical fail. Yes! That is a, a 22. Yep. And that's a seven. Hard no. It's so only one hit. And he only gets you for three points of damage. Good! And you do have an opportunity to, to uh, make an attack on that guy. I Ooh. shall. Messed up. With you. I'm good. Yeah, I'm just not. I'm going to kill someone with a fucking sword before the end of this campaign. I swear to God. That's 17 against AC. That'll hit him. Um, for four slashing damage. Okay. He looks mildly hurt. Uh, the green group is up. Who is attacking, uh, Sibo? Uh, 23. He's really swinging for the fences. He know he knows he's the only one left. He went here. for the little guy because the other two people over here are in giant suits of armor. So uh, that's five points of damage. What he's doing is going for the craziest, most dangerous little guys. What's happening? Considering what he did to his pal. Uh, however, he, he did five points of damage on you, but Michael is standing right there, and he's going to try and avenge you, your injuries, and uh, in his. Move that you've now seen several times. He uh, crosses his arms and uh, then uncrosses them using his swords as a very effective head chopping device. So that is the end of green. What we got left? Uh, you have pink and orange left here. Uh, and orange <coughs> is up and they're attacking Brunhilde. Uh, ten. Nine. And 23. Oh, finally. <laughs> it took him long enough. Uh, four points of damage. Oh, what do you do? <laughs> uh, Soldier 2 is up and he is attacking Pink currently. And, uh, he's not gonna get the job done. Sibo, you're up. Uh, Sibo is gonna sprint over to Orange. Okay. Group. That help Brunhilde out. Um, uh, and he's gonna come at him with the daggers. Yeah, Brunhilda looks like she needs help. Yeah, That's gonna you know, be fourteen. Nope, I gotta do it. Uh, that one's gonna be fifteen. That will do it. Four, nine points of damage. Okay, you uh, you finish off one of the injured soldiers, and he is a dead. No longer See, dead. You got two left in this group. One is very weak. One is still at full health. We'll go for the weak one. Okay. Oh, 17. Uh, yes. Uh, 14 damage. His head looks like mush inside of his helmet. <laughs> Delicious. How much made it in? Making watermelon out of the head. Uh, soldier number one is Just up. Look it up. And he is going to uh, move his attentions to the pink group now. He does 21 points of damage and uh, completely obliterates one of these dudes. Ramash is up. Alright, Ramash is going to attack the um, pink group with another uh, blue sign. Okay. And why not? That's uh, 13 against AC. That will not hit. <laughs> Roll, your, roll that d20. I rolled a 5. Okay. Roll damage on that produced flame. Fuck me. <laughs> That's 6 fire damage. Okay. Uh, you catch yourself on fire. <laughs> uh, take 6 fire damage. and it, um, Actually, it's reduced to 3 because I'm fire resistant. Okay. You will continue to take damage every turn going forward until you or someone else puts the fire out. God damn it! Stop, Stop dropping drop and roll! Stop dropping and roll! So you are... Because you know you're nearby. No, I don't know. You have your movement, man. 
Uh, I do. But does he remember how to put out a fire? <laughs> does he knows how to make it, but does oh, he know how to do it? Rick, 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 Rick <laughs> dragon, <laughs> dragons create fire. They don't put them out. <laughs> Good <laughs> fucking luck, then. Good point. Rip. He's going to start screaming. <laughs> Rip. Ah. Oh, what what happened? No. <laughs> so I guess, are you using your movement speed after this, or are you... What the hell am I going to... Okay, um, are sure, you, uh, I'll move 30 feet away from Pink Stop, Pool. drop, and roll. Are you just running, like, away from them, back towards the way you came... Like, back towards the your allied encampments here, or Sure, what? can I drop to the ground and try to roll? Or do I have to wait till my next turn? That, that is action? going to be... You can either run away or roll, but you can't do both. I'll roll, because I don't want to take damage. Okay. So, you drop to the ground and roll, and you put the fire out, however you are now prone. Ah, eh, well, worse things have happened in my life. Mikael. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm gonna draw my bow. That does not. Alright. And then I'm gonna use my extra attack to attempt for the second time. 17 succeeds. Okay, which group are you attacking? Pink. Pink. Okay. Uh, 22 against Stacy. That'll hit him. Fuck yeah. For 14 damage. Alright. You, uh, catch one of the soldiers in the side and he goes down. Solid hit. Uh, pink group is up. And, um, they are gonna attack Ramash. And they have advantage because you are prone on the ground. Fuck me! First one rolled a three twice. Actually, <laughs> so that's an eight. <laughs> Negatory so no on that. Uh, second guy got a twenty-two. Yeah, that'll do it. There's only two guys left, right? In uh, pink, yes. Thank God. So seven points of damage as you're rolling around. This guy God. comes down with his spear and catches you a good one. Ramash is really not looking good. Michael is up. He is going to turn his attentions away from Green, who are now all dead, and uh, attack the last remaining guy in orange. And um, you know what? He, you know what he does? He picks this guy up and he headbutts him, and the uh, ornate design on the front of his helmet stabs into this guy's forehead and kills him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, so he is now dead. How would you like your kill? Extra brutal. <laughs> Brutality. Yeah, and Brutality. Uh, Michael actually Michael actually has some blood that's dripping down his face, like into his beard, and it looks super badass. He just licks. So his wait, was beard. that the last okay, one? Okay, gross. No. <laughs> that was the last in orange. Okay. Soldier two is up. He's gonna go after the pink group, which are the only ones left. And uh he critically failed. So I guess Pink gets an opportunity attack here. Uh, this guy takes two spears and looks beat up. He's still okay, but he is uh, not great here. Sibo, you are okay. Um, now that he's injured, can we give him the name? <laughs> Soldier <laughs> number two. No, I mean it, it's not. That's on you guys. You should have listened. Listen, their listen right here. Their name. Their names are Soldier Boy and Soldier Seventy Six. Their names are Soldier Boy and tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Gilliard. No. And uh, get off my lawn. You know, if you if you took some time to get to know them, maybe they would have real names, but, you know. Oh, that. What about the one named Gilbert? Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I only sound like this because I took a spear to the throat. Looks like Sibo's going to go do some more work with his daggers. You see. Well, he's going to try. We're gonna at nine to five with his daggers. Uh, it's gonna be sixteen. That hits. And ooh, that's a six. Nope. That's going to be eleven points of damage. Okay. In a flurry of blows, you drop him to the ground. Brunhilda, you're up. Is there still somebody in the orange crew? There is oh, one person left in pink. Everyone converge on him. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna go for that pink. Get over here, Pinky! Get over here! <laughs> 27. That does it. Holy 
I don't dig. Man, I could deal 27 damage in my dreams. Not damage. Five damage. Okay, that's 18 damage. Yeah, you, uh, you stride forward and, uh, with a final, uh, blow, bringing the hammer high over your head because this guy's taller than you, so you bring the hammer over his head. (laughs) You bring the hammer over your (laughs) head, but then you just catch him in the face as you bring it forward. Good old splat. And then he, uh, yeah, he drops backwards. Everybody that was involved in that fight gets 400 XP. Da, 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 da. TM, 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 TM. TM However, TM, TM, TM. Uh, so you now stand on this battlefield surveying this small company that you have now defeated. And before you really have a chance to truly appreciate what's happened, you hear the heavy thud of marching footsteps as uh, some sort of large-scale force marches through the city to come oppose you.